Vicky Gregory. I work here at Rossdale and Partners in Newmarket, an equine veterinary practice, and I'm an equine veterinary nurse. We start every day um, with rounds in the morning where all the vets and the nurses get together um, so that we, we're all up to date and know what's happening with each horse. You never know what's going to happen in a day. You turn up at 8 o'clock in the morning, you could have a semi-quiet day or you can just be flat out all day and not stop at all and you know you don't know when you're going to finish at the end of the day. So one of the best things about being an equine vet nurse is that you don't really have a typical day um, because anything can happen at any point. Um, but we generally start at 8 o'clock in the morning um, and hope to finish by about 5 but obviously it just depends on what's happening. Um, but I thought you might like to see some of the stuff that we do in a day. Um, we're just going to take a peritoneal tap from this horse, which is a belly tap, um, and we get um, there's a cavity there where we can get fluid from, and then we'll test the fluid to see what the white blood cells are like. Just going to run this sample on the haematology machine. So I'll put in its name. Then I'll just measure its total protein to stand up um, on the refractometer. Um, so the results for that, for its white blood cell, that's 0 0.8, so that's a good indicator. Um, these two have had surgery, um, and so they're just recovering now, and we're just increasing the amount of feed they get, because once they've had surgery, they go on to fluids and don't have any food for a few days, um, and then you have to introduce it slowly to make sure that their stomach and their intestines can cope with it. Um, they start on picks of grass, and then they go up to little bits of hay, and they have a mash. Um, and then just get them back to normal food and hopefully they cope with it. 564. Um, we just weighed the horse because we're now going to give it some drugs but you have to work out how much to give by per kilogram so we now know how much it weighs and we can calculate its drugs. This horse has got a wound on its heel and because of where it is it keeps opening so we've put a cast on the horse to keep it still so that the wound can heal. Um, I actually just saw an advert in Horse and Hound for an EVN um, and sent my CV round to get into a practice um, and then you're trained within your practice but you can't just go to college and do the no, equine veterinary nursing, you have to be within a practice to do it um, and then it's a two year course, you don't have to have done your small animal veterinary nursing beforehand, you can just go straight into the equine side of it now um, and it's a two year course. Um, with going to college one day a week, working in practice full time and doing a portfolio alongside your college days um, and then there's exams at the end of year one and year two. I'm just drawing up some drugs um, and injecting them into these fluids to put up the horse that we saw previously. Um, this will help hopefully to um, get its guts to be more motile. Um, and you have to be careful when you're doing this to keep everything sterile um, because you don't want dirt or anything getting into this because it then goes into the horse's bloodstream. Um, these curly giving sets reach all around the box um, and also like if he was to lie down to go to sleep or to be rolling about and colicking in pain, then it would reach as well. 
Um, this bag should go over 10 hours. Um, we just put that bit of tape there so that the horse can't change it itself. Um, and then we'll turn it on there. And that's him done. We're just going into theatre now. Because it's a, well, it's not completely sterile, but we try to make it a very clean environment. Um, and we use sterile equipment on the horse. So we have to just put some overalls on and change our shoes and put a hat on as well so that we keep the area clean. This is other than anaesthetic. Um, it's now come off the table, so it'll have had some sedative when it came off the table to try and make it sleep a bit longer. You can see we've got a head and tail rope system here. Um, this is so that when the horse tries to get up, we can guide it up, hopefully, um, which will help to try and prevent it falling down again. We're just starting to wake up a little bit. You're up. Good fella. Good fella. You're up. It's all right. Come on. Just stand. You're all right. It can be quite scary for them having the ropes flap around. So we just try and do it as quietly and calmly as possible. Good fella, hey? Um, I'm just going to give this some sedation so it will stand still um, so I can clip it. Um, it's, you know, it's got a long surgery ahead of it so it needs to be quiet and still. I think the best thing about being an equine veterinary nurse is that obviously you're helping the horses. Um, they come in as different cases, you know, some of them are routine surgery, some of them are emergencies, but whatever you're doing for them, you're trying to help them um, be more comfortable and happier in their lifestyle. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, we're successful in that, obviously, you know, we do lose some cases and some horses but we've got a higher percentage that go out a lot better. So, um, and also, like, it's different every day. You never have the same thing, you know. You don't know what you're coming into in the morning. It's just a wide variety of different things. This is an emergency case that's just coming in this afternoon. It's colicking, so we're just going to check it over and make a plan from there. So Mary's just going to listen to this horse's heart and, and count its respirates, take its temperature, listen to its gut sounds, look at its mucous membranes. She'll then look at the blood results. Um, once we've taken a baseline for the horse, we can then sedate it um, so it's quieter and easy for us to handle. Um, and we'll give it some buscapan, which is a drug to relax it, so that Mary can then rectal it without causing any damage to the horse. Um, we'll then take it into the stocks behind me um, and rectal the horse and we'll do a peritoneal tap on the horse um, on its tummy like I did earlier and we'll tube the horse as well to see if there's any reflux um, and we'll scan its abdomen. Um, so the buscapan will help him to relax and Mary will then rectal him. Mm -hmm. And then this is some sedation to get him a little bit sleepy so that he doesn't object too much when Mary rectals him. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. And then I just put my finger on there and just so it doesn't get a hematoma. Just closes off the little hole where I've been into the vein. You go up the horse's nose and then you get to the back of the throat here and you just need to encourage them to swallow it. And then once it advances further, you just have to suck to test to see if you're in the esophagus or the trachea. You want to be in the esophagus, which goes to the stomach, and that's a soft structure, and if you suck it will collapse around the tube. But if you're in the trachea, which goes to the lungs, that's made out of cartilage rings, and that won't collapse around the tube and you'll just keep sucking. So you just want to make sure that you're in the esophagus and not the trachea.
I've just put this tube into the horse's stomach. I'm now going to pump some water in and build up a, a siphon so that we can test to see if there's any reflux in there because um, the horse can't be sick. So we'll just see if there's anything in his stomach or not. Mary's just scanning the horse um, to see um, what its intestines are doing, what the movement's like, and if everything's in the correct place. So this horse has got an impaction, so we're going to put it in its stable on some IV fluids to help clear that. Um, and Mary's just tubing it now um, with some fluids and some magnesium and paraffin to help move it. Um, and then we'll just monitor it over the night and do checks on it regularly and just try and keep it comfortable. Okay, so we've finished with him now. He seems comfortable at the moment, so we're just going to monitor him overnight and hope that he stays okay. And that's me done for the day. Um, if you want to become an equine veterinary nurse, my top tips for you are to get good grades at school, GCSEs, um, get lots of experience in the equine world with your own horses and other people's horses, so go to stables or anything that you can do, um, and also get lots of sleep because you might not get any when you're a nurse. <laughs>